Live now on the Zoller booth. Before, before we talk about any technologies, I stutter on myself a little bit. It's because of the excitement of these shoes. Are you kidding me? Look what Zoller is doing here on the booth. But now that we've got past the part of the fashion, let's talk a little bit about Zoller itself with one of the coolest named people I've ever met, Dietmar. Is that not a cool name, Dietmar? Let's talk about Zoller. It's good to see you. Nice to see you, Tony. Thank you very much for coming. Zoller is a third generation company basically founded in 1945 and Solar Inc. Uh, 1997. Around the globe we have roughly 800 employees and we are, have sales and service representation in 80 countries itself. So you're kind of saying there's some history here and you got quite the technology because of that history. Absolutely. The first preset was introduced in 1963 and we kept growing from there and what we showcase today and in other shows as well, it's just cutting edge technology. And you guys are what we think about that German precision. You're right in there. You're the leaders over there. And it's really cool to know, having it here in the U.S., that we have that quality here. Yes. And we're at IMTS today showcasing some really cool technology. And I know automation is that key buzzword that we're all talking about right now, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Automation, I think, is more and more coming. You see that the machine tools part loading. But now, how do you support this? These setups and solar basically as usual cutting edge technology. We think about we do everything around the cutting tool itself, from tool management, presetting, but now we did the next step. And this is what we will discuss later on. How do you prepare your cutting tools automatically, 24-7, kick out the cutting tool every three minutes and then bring it right up to the machine and even if possible we load the cutting tool and remove it from the ATC. Wow, it's amazing to think about how far technology has come from back in the day to now, hearing you talk about that and what we're getting ready to show this audience. So as we're going through this, guys, gals out there, if you have questions, ask those questions. We have the stream coming through in our phones, on our pockets, and we can answer them for you. So automation as a whole here in the U.S., it's obviously a global thing. Why, why would you say automation is that buzzword right now? Is it the labor shortage? Is it the reshoring initiative? Where do you see it as a leader at Zoller? I think it's a combination of multiple things. We have the skilled worker sort, sort, shortage. We have, um, yeah, nobody wants to work anymore as hard as earlier. <laughs> Let me put it in this way. And at the end of the day, it's everything more competitive. Global sourcing, reshoring again, but companies need to be on the cutting edge to sustain, to compete on a global scale, and Zola has the right solutions for that. I am 100% with you, my friend. When we're talking about some places in the world being able to throw people at machinery in the U.S., places like Europe, we can't do that. We must automate, and that's not just a labor shortage, just in order to compete on a global scale. So with that segue, we're going to have our cameraman come over here. Dietmar, let's talk about this specific technology. We got a beautiful yellow robot in there. I'm quite familiar with yes. that, but let's talk about what's going on on the inside. So what you see right now is our Robobox. This is basically assembling 24-7 cutting tools. We take the holders with the robot, the cutting tool, and we have three stations right now. But you see here the heat shrink portion, we put the tool away, then we cool it, we assemble, uh, we assemble it, measure it, chip it, and it goes right back. And we can even take it so far, an HEV goes underneath, the cart brings it right to the machine, and the guy just needs to load it. Again, 24-7 kick out of cutting tools. So just for fun, by my curiosity, there's probably some audience members out there wanting to know the same thing. How did this used to be done and how long did it take and how many operations are we now combining by being able to invest in something like this? Because people want to know about that ROI, right? Absolutely. We have normally, we call it solar automatic. It's our combo machine. But I would say five minutes you need to shrink. You need to grab the tool, put it together, cool it. And what you see here right now, we have the tool here, the storage. On the right side, we have the shrinking. We have the cooling and we have the measurement and chipping. We do that in three minutes. But as we know, people get distracted, people drink a coffee, and suddenly the five minutes are eight minutes. And the machine is standing where are my cutting tools. And this cannot happen with a Robobox. 24-7 fully automated tool assembly. You know, I'll tell you something real quick. The first robot I ever programmed was stirring my coffee because that's all we could get it to do. But you're right. This is how it all works, right? We're trying to get our return on investment. So there are also a lot of companies right now who know they want to do it. We're all talking about it. Every engineer you speak with, every sales guy, you have to do it. So we're being told that as a, as a manufacturing company. How easy do you think it really is to implement something like this into a facility? I think the precondition is to have a strong, solid tool management in the back, uh, backbone, as this is a backbone. And these are all the driving the whole automation here. The second part is the, uh, the serialization of your tool assemblies. And if you 
do that right, we can start from the get-go automation. If you have quickly time, I can show you the different modules. So now to the right, we have our heat shrink. Basically, we nothing new, respective to how we shrink, it's still inductive. We should shrink it to four tenths or 10 microns accuracy in stick out legs. <clears throat> Coil comes down, the, the robot is putting the tool in with a linear movement and it shrunk. And then the robot is moving the cutting tool over there. Now we directly see the is getting heated up and the linear robot on the right will put it in. But on top of that, my friend, when we're talking about the ease of use, right? When we're trying to convince these guys, you, well, we, we're all convinced we need yeah. to, but sometimes fear or whatever gets in the way. You have a sales support service team across this entire country to make sure that if their worry does exist, you're there for them, right? Only, not only in this country, it's around the globe. Like I mentioned in the beginning, we have 80 sales and service representatives around the globe. We're here in the US, Solar Inc. was founded in 1947, uh, 1997, excuse me, we have an organization of 100 people. We have five people who are doing nothing else than automation because automation means 24-7, means we need to support 24-7 as well. That's amazing. That's what we wanted to hear. Do we want to talk a little bit about this software yes. or do you want to move over to the tooling? Software first? Yes. Let's do the software. One important part, I mentioned this software, and we have one common platform across all the solo solutions. Here we see our Pilot 4 on automation uh, web team S, and it's really very easy to program ease of use to set it up. You don't really need an engineer to program the robot. It's everything we teach in the beginning, and the rest is child's play. The engineers are the one that created the program, so yeah. now that the regular guys like myself yes. will be able to run something like yeah. that, right? Absolutely. So now, this is certainly, certainly for our manufacturing companies who make parts. The same challenge we have also for our two manufacturers, which need to inspect cutting tools, might be 100%. Same problem. They need to wash, they need to laser edge, they need to inspect very labor intense, and these guys are smart. They should do something better than putting a tool in and out. So what we see right now is our RoboSet 2. We have two levels. On the back side, we have washing. On the, on the top side, we have laser. And we can basically feed here eight pellets, max, maximum nine. And when you add it up, 150 multiplied by eight, 1,200 cutting tools, you can keep it going 24-7. And to the right side, basically the tool is put over to the Genius. It's our 5X inspection machine which you see right here, and everything works simultaneously. Measurement machine, etching, cleaning, and that's basically the solution also for our cutting tool manufacturers. Well, that makes sense to me, and I've been to, you know, we know the big boys in this industry that are making all these cutting tools, right? So it's pretty obvious that they're using these products. Yeah. But I've actually been into manufacturing facilities where they're making their own cutting tools as well, and I've seen these products of yours in yeah. manufacturing yeah. facilities. Exactly, very valid point. It's so important to have your cutting tool inspected because you make very expensive parts sometimes. The, the cutting tools need to be right or companies are doing their own resharpening. This is certainly also a product which can be used for them. Yes. Dietmar, you nailed this conversation. Guys, if there's questions out there, again, send them in. I'm going to be at Dietmar at the end of this conversation, again, at the front of this booth. But for now, we're going to send it over to my buddy Rowan to learn a little bit more about Zola. Okay, and I'm here with Mike. We're going to be talking about a brand new machine here, but I want to challenge him a little bit because brand new machines, some people don't, don't always want to buy the first machine that people, the company comes out with. But before that, it's a heat shrink machine, and there's lots of problems with heat shrink machines. What happens if you buy the wrong one? Well, first of all, I mean, the first thing is if you overcook your tools, you're going to have your tool holders are going to, you know, 50% life in your tool holders, all that. Um, so it's really important that you choose the right machine that's going to match your needs in your shop. Um, energy costs, uh, safety, all of these things are an issue. So shrink machines aren't all the same. Absolutely, and all those things are going to be a greater issue probably in the future. Maybe not safety, safety has always been an issue, yeah. but material costs, energy costs are all going up. Now, Michael, you've got, you've had a lot of experience running a machine shop yourself. What would you personally, if you imagine yourself back in the day when you were, you were there uh, working hard, what would you uh, be looking for in a heat shrink machine? Well, first of all, the Zoller heat shrink machine, CSA UL certified machine. It's the only one of its kind. The only one that has the CSA UL certification. You don't have to have a secondary certification to put it in your shop. Also, I want a machine that's safe for my employees because the last thing I want is ER visits and, and everything else because my employees are burning their hands or something like that. With our machine, we have 
two technologies that we came out with what we call shrink by light and cool by light. It's a light system that walks the operator through the process so they're doing it in the safest manner possible. It's seriously a red, red is stop, green is go system. If you could drive a car, you could drive this machine. And it's really important though, the safety aspect because we, we were talking earlier about SMEs, smaller companies. These guys, the, the, they might be running double shift, they might be running 16 hours a day and they're getting tired by the end of the show. And the heat shrink machines, if you've got uh, a machine down because one of your heat shrink tool holders needs changing over and you're tired, you can't figure out how it works, you're gonna start making mistakes, aren't you? Absolutely. Two things that Zoller did that's really important. Number one is we paid attention to the market for a very long time. We also, we fixed all the things that we thought were wrong with these shrink units. Uh, you know, and, and then we tested this. We've been, we've been in R&D with this for a couple years now. We tested it, we love it, and it's ready to go. And that was going to be my first question. Yeah. Since this machine is brand new, people might be a little bit scared and thinking, well, how much have you actually tested this? Are you just using us as a test bed? Uh, no, absolutely not. We've, these machines are already in the marketplace uh, with key customers. We've been testing it. We've been, uh, it's been in R&D, and we've actually delayed the launch to, to IMTS because we're excited to have it here. Okay, so battle-tested presetters. Uh, and if you've got any questions for Michael about this, uh, sorry, battle-tested heat shrink machines, if you've got any questions for Michael about this heat shrink machine, uh, if you're looking for one in the market, then get in touch right now. We are streaming right live. Michael, let's have a quick demo now. We all know how demos go. They always go smoothly, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. No problem. HSK 63 holder. Uh, what you'll notice here is on this holder I have a QR code. This is a Zoller data matrix chip in a Zoller tool holder, brand new tool holder, Zoller tool holder. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply scan, scan my QR code and all of my information about this tool, the size, the diameter comes up and I'm now going to put this under my, uh, under my coil. This is a brand new coil. So this coil, uh, typically the old coils have one coil that goes around to contact on the tool holder. Zoller uh, has developed a two coil uh, uh, unit which actually applies heat in two different places on that holder. We've reduced the energy consumption by 30% and we've also reduced the time to shrink this tool by 30%. So not only are you saving energy costs, you're actually saving cycle times, setup times, change around times when it's really important to get machines back up and running. Absolutely, absolutely. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring my induction coil down, and you'll see here, it's, it's telling me what to do. I press the start button. As soon as that gets through, I'm gonna go ahead, lift up my induction coil, bring my tool down, and now you see our shrink by light technology. The green, uh, the green cooling bell is flashing. This is the cooling bell they want me to use. I'm just gonna bring this down right onto my tool and you'll see it turn red. That means it's hot, don't touch it. It's in the process of cooling right now. Just like stop, red means stop, green means go. Absolutely. And uh, it's all about the safety, so you're gonna be wearing gloves while you're doing this process, definitely. Uh, for the sake of the demo, uh, we're doing that. But red, so that means the tool is hot right now, don't touch this, Absolutely. And but that means I guess you could take in another part if you wanted to shrink another machine, another tool right now. Yeah, right now I can be shrinking my next tool or I can be shrinking an HSK 100 or whatever my next tool is. I can be shrinking that right now while I'm cooling. As soon as this is done, it's actually going to turn blue. Okay, fair enough. Right? Yeah. Blue for cold. Blue. blue for cold. As soon as it turns blue, I'm ready to go. This tool can go right out to the shop floor, and we're all set. I love so. that. It's, it's, it's easy enough to use for even for a dummy like me. Yep. Red, blue, green, I absolutely love it. The one thing you can tell with, the, 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 with the how new this machine is also, some, some new products, you're starting to see the kind of the 3D printed part as well. That just shows how uh, new the design is for this, and the induction coil is absolutely fascinating. What I find amazing as well is the, the motorized coil. Now, on some pre, uh, presetter machines, or heat treat machines, you have to go in and change a pot out. Have you tried to make sure there is as little operator intervention in, in the, the process as possible? Absolutely. So we, so with this coil, our design is called the Veroct design, and Veroct stands for Variable Octagon. So actually, there's a there's a major building here in the U.S., a sports building that has a roof that opens and closes, and it's and it close up opens and closes with a variable octagon design, which is 
when we saw it, we said, that's it. That's our coil design. I love it. Inspired so, by, a, by a sports stadium. Absolutely, by a stadium. We saw it, and we knew right away that's exactly the, the design we needed, and that's what we put into it. Uh, every day the operators can look at that and go, okay, yeah, that reminds me of fun times, right? When, when you see a game on TV and they're opening the roof, you look at it and go, that looks like my induction. You go to Think Zola when you see the octagonal absolutely. stadium. Absolutely. Definitely. And one thing, let's step, take a step back now, and rather than um, talk about the, the technicals of how you actually do the shrinking, it's more about the tool database, the QR codes. Yeah. How does that system work? What if you don't have QR codes on your, on your tool holders? Uh, so the QR code, the Zoller QR code, allows you to create a unique identifier for that tool assembly. And it's very cool. It doesn't have to work just with the Zoller uh, tool holders. It actually fits in any RFID chip uh, pocket in, in any tool holder and allows you to attach that data matrix code so you don't have to etch your tools or whatever and, and it, when they wear out you can pop them out, you can put a new one in, assign it to the tool and you can keep track in the Zoller database of all of the information about that tool every step of the process. Who said it? Who used it? What machine it went into? What were the nominals of the machine what, or of the tool? What were the dimensions? What was it set to? What was the run out? Who shrank it? And I guess you could also get how many shrink, shrinks you've done with a holder as well, so Absolutely. you know what your ROI is. Because sometimes, some people treat these uh, tool holders as consumable, don't they? Yep. Absolutely, and all of a sudden, we find out, if we're not keeping track of that, that, that we're getting a huge amount of run out, or we, we scrap parts in our machine because our holders are way past their prime and we didn't replace them. I noticed we've just gone green there, which means you can take the tool holder out. And on that note, uh, I'm going green. Let's go over to Tony straight away. Oh, hello there. Uh, Deepmar and I were just having a chat about how amazing this booth is, but I had to share it with you as well. So we're just going to quickly go over some of the other technology that wraps everything full circle based on what Rowan went over, what we went over earlier with automation. Deepmar, this is a really cool booth. It's vibrating with such passion with all these customers on here. What are they looking at? Yeah, what we see on the left side is basically our presetter, which Zola is most known for. To the right side is our tool management solution and tool management hardware. On the way back is inspection. We are a one-stop shop, really from entry type units, when you want to get started, to full automation, what we have seen, and everything in between. And the greatest thing is everything is scalable. You start with Pilot 4, and you can grow. You can get the full efficiency, and it's your benefit. Every day, more profit with Zola for your companies, and you keep going. So if you're looking for that Zoller quality and service, you can start here and just continue to grow throughout, almost like building with Legos, right? Kind of, kind of. A little bit more to it, but that's the idea, yes. <laughs> yeah, don't let me underplay. I try to keep it simple sometimes. That's how my mind works. But is there anything exciting coming up? From my point of view, I'm going to be heading to Germany soon. I believe we're going to give you guys a factory tour. Stay tuned for that. But from the Zoller side, what are you guys having? Well, we never stop. We never stop. You see it on top. Progress never stops on the shield, and that's what it's all about, Zolo. It means we take challenges from our customers and just keep going. You saw the automation, how it started with a customer request. We developed, we developed, and we have so many more requests regarding automation. What you have seen before, our balancer and tool, and tool holder and power shrinks, these were all just needed. We are focused on customers to, make, to help you to make your company run more efficient, and we're happy to do so. This is Deepmar, 18 years with Zoller, speaking his second language. I can barely speak my first language. <laughs> Very well done, my friend. Thank you for sharing this. As far as finding them, you know where to find Zoller. Come on, you know you do. We don't even need to give the website, but if we're going to, Zoller.com? Oh, it's www.info.com. There you go. Perfect. Thank you all for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon. Deepmar, you are amazing, my friend. Thank you.